bomb. I do I do I do I do I do I What I'm doing here anymore. What's a paladin? Because that's about it, right? That's Ultimate 9 summed up in three fucking words. What's a paladin? Fuck you, the end. I could have wrapped this whole thing up right there, but I didn't know all this shit happened when I first played this game. And I had no idea how thoroughly my sense of loyalty and childhood wonder would get pounded right in the ass. But and now it's my turn to hurt this fucking game, and you're gonna watch so you feel just a fraction, just a tiny amount of the suffering that I felt, because it's my mission now to show you assholes what suffering really is. The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? Fuck you! Why did I even bother trying to count the betrayals in this fucking game? I already fucked this whole review up by even trying to, because you can't count betrayals. You can't equate what's a paladin to some continuity errors on a fucking tapestry. I started to realize, like, all betrayals aren't equal, so let's just forget the whole betrayal counter gag. The, the whole bit was getting annoying anyway. Here's my point, though. Do you see how high this thing got? If anything, if betrayals aren't equal, it should be way higher. And we're not even 20 minutes into this game. We haven't even finished exploring the starting city. We haven't even really begun our quest yet. That's the worst part as a player, is, is knowing all this up front. Knowing that you haven't even really started the game, and you have not yet begun to suffer. But you keep playing, you know. You gotta play Ultima 9 because you love Ultima, and you've stuck with it through, what, like, 13 games and you got to see how it all ends it's all been leading to this so you see the ending even though you know deep in your soul the ending is going to be the drizzling shits anyway so you leave britain completely under equipped and you head to a village called pause not because you really need to mainly because it's the only direction you're allowed to go hey, check it out that thing is hung like a horse it's good to see Lord British is taking real good care of his subjects, exiling them all to a shanty in the middle of a swamp to die horribly of malaria. Did nobody mention this to the king, that this was going on, the whole forcibly deporting the poor and the sick to the middle of a disease-ridden swamp? LB, do you notice the problem here? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, all I'm saying is, you'd think he'd notice the torch-wielding mobs and the massive civil unrest and the mass deportation of the majority of Britain's citizens occurring literally within earshot of the castle walls. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the dude's got a shit ton of crystal balls all set up on the balcony to see what's going on all over the realm. He couldn't just, like, go outside to peek out and see what's going on in his own city? I'm not entirely sure. It's also good to see he's keeping the roads and the outlying villages completely unpatrolled and wide open to being sacked and burned by brigands. Lord British, you want to do anything about the bandits operating completely unchecked literally a hundred yards outside the city walls? I'm not entirely sure. No? Okay, um... Maybe you want to send one of your knights out to deal with the troll that's cutting off the only trade route leading to Britain? Well I mean, it's not like he's doing anything else. I'm not entirely sure. You see what- do you see what I mean about this bullshit? I just stepped outside the city walls. I'm not even doing anything, and I can already find something to bitch about for 15 minutes. It almost seems like there's no end to it, doesn't it? Oh, but you can end your suffering any time you like, Avatar. Shut up! I'm gonna finish this if it's the last thing I do. We can't get fresh water from this mill because the valve is broken. Actually, I think the reason you can't get fresh water from the mill is because uh, the water going to the mill is a stagnant, poisonous, undrinkable swamp full of parasites. It's all just a fetch quest anyway. Lots of super heroic rat killing. And don't I feel like a big goddamn hero just mowing down rats all day. So you fix the valve, but it produces blue dye? Uh, the lady thanks you anyway. Yeah. Good luck drinking that. Oh, fuck me. What fresh hell is this? So here's this giant enemy crab. Are you serious? 
Because, you know, there weren't any scary monsters we could use from the previous games, right? We had to introduce giant crabs, which were never in any other Ultima games, of course. <laughs> Damn, look at this! Come on! Come on! Seriously? <laughs> Fucking crabs take more punishment than the headless! Dude, I gotta get more water-type Pokemon. Apparently these bastards are indestructible. I got new respect for those dudes on Deadliest Catch. You ever see that show? Jeez, crab meat should cost like $10,000 a pound. Up. This shit's personal now. Come on, you crotch smoker. Die! 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 <laughs> Fucking finally! Jesus Christ! At least the crab had a ton of gold on it, right? Because that makes sense. Avatar, it is I, Shamino. Of course it is. Obviously. Shamino, where are you? I've been trapped in the spirit realm. You're probably aware of the columns that have appeared. When they first came out of the ground, I felt that there was something very sinister about them. So I undertook a spiritual quest to learn more. Really? No shit! You had to go to the ethereal plane to piece that one together, did you? Good job! I, I, I don't know, I, I mean, I guess I can see why someone might think the giant lava spewing columns were put together by the Care Bears to emit cotton candy and friendship. Why aren't you out there fixing things? You're the Avatar, you're supposed to be fixing things. Okay, so the goal of the game is to go to each of the corrupted shrines and meditate there. And to do that, you need to learn each shrine's mantra, which you'd think the goddamn Avatar would have written down by now after eight fucking games, but no! And get this. Even if you did write the mantras down, it won't help you because in several instances, the game will reject the correct mantra until you've completed the necessary storyline quests to learn it on your own. That is bullshit. Then you have to go into the columns to retrieve the corrupted runes of virtue, which you'd have thought by now that it taken better care of than putting them in a glass case in an unguarded room, but no! And lastly, you have to purify them at the shrine with the magic sigils. What is a sigil? What's a paladin? No, no. That is actually a valid question. What the fuck is a sigil? Well, a sigil is something the game designers pulled completely out of their ass that's never been connected to the virtues before, purely as busy work. It's just one more thing you've got to do in every town. It's, it's busy work of the most transparent sort. And the whole game is like this. All you do over and over is you go to a town where everyone's an asshole. Then you get the mantra, then you go to the dungeon near the town, you solve a shitload of lame switch puzzles, you fight a guy, you get the rune, then you go back and fix the rune. Then you go to the next town full of assholes and do it all over again. Seven more times. I just feel like I'm spinning my wheels, treating the symptoms and not the disease. I feel like I should be going after the Guardian instead of fucking around with brigands and rats. I feel like by now there should be some epic magical showdown between two gods flinging magic spells that level entire continents. But no, I'm fighting rats. 11 plus games, you know, I've, I've journeyed to other planets, other dimensions, I've slain alien gods. And here I am. I'm still hip deep in rats. <laughs> Fuck my life. Britain seems to have changed. What evil has been unleashed in Britannia? Can you tell me anything about the columns? I'm afraid that I don't know much about them. I do think that they're evil, though. There's something about them, and it's not good. You know, I think you might be onto something here. Where is Yolo? Oh, Avatar. I'm so worried about him. Lord British sent him down to despise, and he hasn't come back. It's been a very long time now, and I'm worried. What, you mean she didn't go looking for her fucking husband? 
Winnow was supposed to be fucking badass. She went to Serpent Isle for fuck's sake, the first person to do so in hundreds of years. And she just got through telling me that despise shouldn't be much of a problem. And why the fuck didn't Lord British mention that one of my best friends for hundreds of years had gone missing investigating the columns on his orders, by the way? I'm not entirely sure. Why didn't he send someone to rescue the fucking guy when he went missing years ago? You're telling me that Lord British sent one guy who's pushing 80 years old in Earth years. One. One fucking guy. And when that one guy didn't report back, big fucking shock, he didn't even bother sending a rescue party? That didn't tip him off that the columns are dangerous when the guy you sent to investigate doesn't come back? Fuck you. So you go into the dungeon, you know, lots of rats, lots of spiders, absolutely nothing interesting. It sucks. Who makes keys out of gold, anyway? The pit is filled with sharp, gem-encrusted spikes. Freelick jumps into the pit to gather the treasure. How much does Freelick get? At the entrance to the column underground, you find a worm guard standing there. Yeah, the Guardian put one guy to guard the world-destroying superweapon. And can you really call him a worm guard when he doesn't have a dragon? I don't know, maybe it was too big to fit in the entrance, it's parked outside. Well, your do-gooder antics are over. Nobody talks like that! After you kick his ass, he surrenders and confesses that he's YOLO and he's been brainwashed by the Guardian to serve him. <laughs> oh, that YOLO. He's always getting possessed by demons. First the bane of insanity and now this. This is when you meet a lady named Raven who saves you from another worm guard and later on joins you in your quest. Uh, you notice how in the FMVs our armor and equipment is completely different and in the cutscenes the Avatar apparently walks around completely unarmed? I need proof that you really are the Avatar. Oh, come on! You don't recognize me? Clearly you've never been to the Museum of the Avatar. My face is all over that fucking tapestry. Come on, look at this face. Tell me I'm not the goddamn Avatar. Who else looks like me? I needed love, Avatar. Ah! And the mayor. Do you think he loves me? You know, this is minor, but I gotta call it up because I fucking hate this every time I see it. A pearl takes as much space in my backpack as a two-handed sword. Why the fuck do they design games like this? Blasted people never leave me alone. First those goblins from the west, now this blonde mutton head. Yeah, you know, this happened so many times in Ultima 9. Give us your gold! This is ridiculous. I'm leaving. I always find it funny when the villagers here somehow get it in their heads that they can take on the Avatar, a heavily armed demigod, in a one-on-one -on -one fight unarmored with their bare hands. You know, I'm the guy who took on Mondane, Minax, Exodus, fucking every great threat to conquer Britannia, but no, this is the guy. He thinks he's the guy who's finally got my number. And of course, you've got no other choice but to chop them in half with a greatsword to stop them. Fucking brilliant. Clearly justice has been done here this day. Because I'm the Avatar! I had no other choice but to chop this fucker in half. Just marvel at the monster AI of Ultima 9. And the game just froze. Fuck. You want to know why it froze? Because this guy, who by the way looks exactly like all the other bandits in this game, is programmed so that you have to approach him and talk to him before proceeding. So if you shoot him, the game crashes. Well, pardon me for being fucking intelligent. Men, get him. Hey, my men, I mean that one guy over there. Holy shit, I can swim. Quite the stark contrast from Pagan, where setting foot in a puddle fucking kills you instantly! Oh, but don't get any bright ideas about going off the plot railroad and swimming to another town. Even though the size of the ocean is only about a hundred yards across the next continent, you can't swim there because- Ah! Invisible ocean force feels unbelievable pain! Well, shit, man, that hurt for some reason. Should probably stay out of the water anyway with all the crabs- Fuck! This game crashes like crazy, and I mean all the fucking time, and it's completely at random. 
if you don't save, you're fucked. And so you're forced to save at every turn after you do every single thing. But here's the thing. You don't want to save because this was one of those games that took forever to finish the save process. So when you save, you'll be waiting for the whole thing to finish for like a minute. So it crashes all the fucking time, which sucks. And because it crashes all the fucking time, you gotta save all the fucking time. And so you spend all day staring at the fucking save screen all the time, which sucks even more. This is this whole thing is glitchy as shit. Oh my god, it's a miracle! The Mayor of Britain is fucking flying! Please, Avatar, I, I need your help! Hell, everyone can fly! I believe I can fly Woo. I believe I can touch the sky I think about it every night and day Spread my wings and fly away I believe I can soar Shot an arrow in my fucking dick! Oh yeah, speaking of combat, the hit detection eats too. Why the fuck? Ah! Hey god, what the hell? On, you learn that the Guardian's got a bunch of secret agents working for him everywhere. I'll tell you the Guardian's plans. He's been toying with you. He plans to... Uh... I will not tolerate disloyalty, Gilligan. Let everyone know that this is what awaits any who would betray me. So wait, okay. The Guardian can literally kill anyone in the world at a moment's notice? And I don't mean he just kills you. Dude just waves his hand and reduces a motherfucker to a pile of guts. If he sees and knows everything that's happening in the world and can kill anybody he wants, alright, well, why doesn't he just kill you? Why not kill everybody? He's content to just sit there on his ass and watch you reverse the influence of his columns? It makes no fucking sense! Raven takes you to Buccaneer's Den, and naturally it's nothing like it was in other games. Actually, in this case, it's funny because it's now bigger than Britain, and one of the main landmarks you might have visited, the casino, is just gone. Oh, but the brothel is still there. Want to party? Sure, let's go! Alright! My price is 100 gold. Yeah, I'm game. Alright then, let's get to it, baby! What in the fuck was that? I just paid a Russian whore a hundred gold pieces, and all I got was a fade to black? It was money well spent, wasn't it? You couldn't even give me a porno music cue? What the fuck is this sound effect? Go to the whore! Go to the whore! Oh yeah, and there's also a fight club in Buccaneer's Den for way more Avatar-like behavior. Like murdering tons of people in bare-knuckle boxing matches and punching them until they turn into featureless piles of gore. <laughs> it's okay, guys, because the people I'm killing are stupid. It seems you too are in need of discipline. Look at this guy! What are these people got a fucking death wish or what? Why is me wearing any pants? God damn, sometimes I feel sorry for- FUCK! FUCK! Anyway, you're here to meet the Pirate King Samhain. He tells you to fix the column near Buccaneer's Den first, which I was going to do anyway, and in return he'll give you the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? Yes! The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom! The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? Yes! It's right there on the fucking table directly in front of you, you toe-headed buttloader! How do you fail to recognize the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom? Your entire fucking philosophy revolves around it! It defines your very exist- Wait, why the fuck does it have a Catholic cross on the cover? That is not the symbol of the Codex! And the book is a fraction of the size it's supposed to be! 
How the fuck did he get a hold of it? Where did you get your hands on that book? Oh, that's not important, Avatar. Um, yeah, it fucking is important because I sent it beyond time and space to the ethereal fucking void. I spent all of Ultima 6 doing that so that no one person could claim possession of the fucking thing to specifically avoid this situation. You've got to find the Shrine of Humility next, after finding where New Magincia is for the FUCK! But for some reason, the Shrine is hidden underwater, and I got no fucking clue why. Can you tell me the mantra to the Shrine of Humility? Your knowledge of the land shall be great. If a truly humble person stands on the promontory to the north, the Shrine will be revealed to them. How do you know that? Seriously, how do you know that? How the fuck do you know that? This is where, you know, I don't know, I can't even explain what happens. It's like you can see the negative space where they didn't finish parts of the game. You raise the shrine from the water, you go meditate at it, and then just BAM! All of a sudden you're in this underwater domed city called Ambrosia. I don't know if I accidentally hit a key and skipped a cutscene or stopped listening to the shrine or what. I have no idea how I got here. This place is the gargoyle city of Ambrosia. And no, this isn't the Ambrosia you've seen in previous games, nor did the gargoyles live in it. And even if they did, which they don't, the city is missing the statues of mundane Minex and Exodus that were in the shrines where they did live. I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. The leader of the gargoyle says that you're the false prophet, which is not true since I disproved it in Ultima 6 and consequently prevented the destruction of the gargoyle race. And just like everyone else in Britannia, these guys act like pricks too. The columns are making them feel an excess of pride, even though humility and pride were never part of the gargoyle system of ethics. So, because I got nothing else to do and I don't know how to get out of here, I just start doing quests for people, putting things on things which activate other things, and eventually I help supply power to a statue to the queen of the gargoyles, which causes Ambrosia's dome to shatter, flooding the dome with water, killing virtually everyone. To know that we are dying. Oh, well, uh... Shit. Oops. But hey, I'm not the false prophet, okay? Don't blame me for the extinction of the gargoyle race, because that guy told me to... I'm not the false prophet! I'm gonna prove it, because I'm gonna save the gargoyle race. Cause I'll, I'll save some gargoyle eggs. Yeah, gargoyle eggs. Didn't you know that gargoyles laid eggs? So who's laying these eggs? There's like one female that runs the whole show. Yes, the queen. She's badass, man. I mean big. So she's, um, well, she's, she's understandably just a tiny bit upset that you kind of, sort of, accidentally destroyed the entire gargoyle race. I mean, okay, it's not like I did it on purpose, alright? Because I'm not the false prophet! I'm trying to get the eggs to save your people here, and if I gotta kill your ass to do it, then that's what I'll do, alright? But I am not the false prophet! What would Lord British think of his avatar now? You haven't been able to beat me yet. Why do you think you can now? What, you mean aside from the three or four times I've beaten you? I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. So we got another dungeon after that, and guess what? Sewer level. The water here is poisonous to the touch, unless you're wearing swamp boots. And apparently swamp boots prevent you from getting poisoned even when you go swimming under the shit juice. I'd also like to note that I'm about 16 hours into this game, and my primary enemies are still fucking rats. Rinse and repeat, switch puzzles, go to the column, get the thing, heal up, FUCK! So when you fix the thing, you go back to Samhain to get your codex, only to find out that it's a trap, and he's been working for Lord Blackthorn this whole fucking time. I'm shocked, I'm blown away! An untrustworthy pirate, who the fuck would have thought? But the codex was not part of the deal. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. All this leads you to being thrown into another dungeon for more Switch puzzles. I know I keep asking this, but why the fuck don't they just kill you already? You can't! The press! What possible reason could Blackthorn or the Guardian have for keeping you alive, when all you do is actively ruin their plans for complete global destruction? Oh, and get this! The jail cell they throw you into just happens to have a secret door in it that leads you to a chamber that just happens to have a magic statue in it that just happens to turn you incorporeal so you can walk through the fucking cell door. I am not even kidding. This thing is just there. It's just there. 
Why the fuck would anyone just put this thing here? And why would they put it in a prison cell? And how lucky is it, of all the hundreds of cells in this fucking dungeon I could have been thrown into, I get the one that has a magic face spider statue. Hey, stop right there, you thief. There you are. Just as Titus said you'd be. Titus? No! <laughs> Who's Titus? Don't play dumb, you know who Titus is. Everyone knows who Titus is. Star player of the Xanarkin Abes? Titus better not be in this fucking game because I swear to God, people will die. I am Titus, caretaker of the Lyceum. Oh, thank God for that. He's just some old dude in charge of the Lyceum, and naturally he's got a bunch of fetch quests for you to do before he'll tell you the mantra of honesty. Which I know already, but I can't use the mantra until after he tells- MOTHERFUCKER COCKSUCKING SUPER CUNT SON OF A FUCK! How does one find the Lyceum? Your knowledge of the land shall be great. You figure out really early on this Titus guy is obviously trying to kill you, because he keeps sending you into obvious death traps, but you still have to do every single one of them. There's no way to take any initiative even when you know he's setting you up. I wouldn't even have to do this if the game would FUCK CRASHING ALL THE TIME! I HATE THIS FUCKING SHIT! FUCK LORD BRITISH TOO! WHAT THE FUCK DO YOU WANT? Well, my astronomers now believe that the columns are greatly affecting the moons. How so? It seems that the columns are pulling the moons out of their orbits, literally dragging them down towards Britannia, if you will. But that could just be a little wobble. Good heavens! Yes, quite. If things are not changed, the moons will collide into Britannia, and I don't need to tell you what will happen then. All life in Britannia will be destroyed. But why? Brackett is no mad dog killer. He is after something. Okay, again, now that we've established that the Guardian's ultimate plan is in fact just to kill everyone in the world, why doesn't he just do it already? He's indestructible for one, and for another, he's proven that he can kill anyone in the world with a passing thought. And he has an army of dragons at his command that completely outclasses any possible resistance Lord British can present, him and his eight fucking guys in the castle. Somehow I doubt that Lord British is any kind of military genius. I'm not entirely sure. Or the Avatar for that matter. Can you tell me about love? Oh my god, something cool is happening. Words cannot describe how frigging stunned I am to actually be fighting a dragon as opposed to the fuck ton of pirates and giant rats I've mowed down to get to this point. Even though the strategy for fighting a dragon is much the same as fighting everything else in this game. That is, click real fast until bad thing fall down. It's so boring and simplistic I just want to cocksucker mother of a dong merchant fuck! God! I just hate this fucking glitchy, clogged up septic tank of game design. The combat is just button mashing. There's no technique because why fucking bother, right? You hit one time and they get stun locked until they die. The monster AI is so bad it's actually kind of depressing to think about. How kill yourself lousy of a programmer do you have to be to screw up the only enemy tactic of Run forward and attack rapidly. Like, look at this dumb motherfucker. He's just pacing back and forth, completely helpless. And for funsies, let's just see how many arrows it takes to put this guy down, shall we? take that many. Jesus. This is turning into a Monty Python sketch. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Give me some money. What do you want? Get lost, you sawed-off little twerp. You have to do what I say, because I'm a little kid. And if you don't, I'm gonna scream and cry. You're a little brat, and I'm not going to give you any money. Hey, you can't talk to me like that. You're mean, and I'm gonna tell everybody, meanie. I'm the goddamn Avatar, okay? Not fucking Santa Claus. You know, we got serious save the world. Oh, hey! What the fuck is going on? He's throwing fire, but really? This is really happening.
happening? How the fuck is the kid throwing fireballs? Magic doesn't work! I'm the Titan of Ether, and I can't throw fireballs yet! What the f- is this kid from the fucking Q Continuum? And of course, my only course of action is to brutally murder another child. Okay, you know what? I've had just about enough of this, honestly, because this, this right here, this is fucking sick. Alright? How many times I gotta deal with a fucking encounter where the Avatar, the hero, the paragon of goodness and righteousness is forced, I repeat, forced, to violently murder several children. Because, you know, if it happened just one time, I'd say, okay, it's a mistake or just a bad joke. But Richard Garriott is clearly putting this in on purpose. At least three games you do this. Honestly, Richard, you know, I love you, man, but fuck you with this child-killing bullshit. I can't even believe that I have to explain why this is bad. But, dude, it's, it's just not cool. I don't know if you're trying to make some kind of ethical or philosophical point about the hero being forced to massacre children, like the duality of man or the nature of evil or you know i don't even give a fuck i don't want to kill children heroes good guys do not murder children and the notion that you're given absolutely no alternative to doing so is fucking disgusting what is wrong with you man you got serious problems it fills you with contempt does it not avatar to be so thoroughly betrayed and abandoned by lord british to know that you serve at best a doddering, incompetent fool. At worst, a smug, manipulative usurper who sold himself, sold you, and all the people you protect, sold you all out for wealth and power. <laughs> Fucking A, man. Wait, are we talking about Lord British or Richard Garriott? He feeds on your loyalty and rewards it only with pain and confusion. He stopped caring for the happiness of the people long ago when he sold his kingdom to powers even darker and more insidious than myself. And why should he care? Why should you? The people resent you, resent your success, resent your purity. They cheer you on only because they enjoy watching you suffer. Shut up, that's not true. You are alone, Avatar. Abandoned by your friends, your co-workers, and very soon, by your own sanity. It is only your darker nature your rage that has brought you this far, brought you to me. And only I can free you from this cage you languish in. But decide soon, this world's time grows short. I'm almost done! I'm almost finished, alright? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs>